Imagine losing a game to an AI that doesn't even know the rules, or getting a life-saving diagnosis from a doctor that never sleeps. Welcome to the AI revolution, where machines are starting to outthink humans in ways we never saw coming. Hey there, Circuit Breakers, Theodore here, and boy, do I have a mind bender for you today. We're diving headfirst into the wild world of AI where silicon brain marvels are turning our reality upside down. From crushing world champions at their own games to potentially diagnosing your next ailment, these digital dynamos are pushing the boundaries of what we thought possible. But here's the kicker. They're doing it without breaking a sweat or even knowing all the rules. Buckle up, folks, because we're about to explore a future where our creations might just be outsmarting us at every turn. Are we ready for this brave new world? Let's find out together. Okay, so are you ready to dive into some seriously cool AI stuff today? Absolutely, I think this stuff is really gonna blow some minds. Right, we're talking robot hands that can practically knit a sweater, yeah. algorithms that can see the future of our food, and computers that get this learn like our brains. It's wild, we've gone from AI being this kind of abstract concept to it solving problems that affect us, you know, every single day. Energy, food on our tables, even getting a grip on how our own brains work. Totally. It's like we're on the cusp of something massive. Take that research out of Peking University, for instance. They've found a way to make AI way more energy efficient. Now they call it a dual IMC scheme. And yeah, it sounds like something out of Star Trek, but bear with me. It's about making computers work more like our brains. Yeah, they're basically making computers more efficient. You see, normal computers use a ton of energy just moving information around between memory and processing. This new scheme, it lets the computations happen right there in the memory itself. Like having a super brain that doesn't waste energy moving stuff around. So no more phones dying in the middle of the day. We're talking weeks on a single charge. Exactly. Run. They call this neuromorphic computing. And let me tell you, it's a complete game changer. Imagine computers becoming like extensions of our own senses, you know, processing information with the same elegance and efficiency as the human brain. OK, speaking of things our brains find incredibly hard. You ever tried teaching a robot to tie a shoelace? Oh, man, it's surprisingly difficult, but Google DeepMind, they've actually managed to pull it off. Their Aloha Unleashed system can tie a shoelace using two hands. The dexterity and coordination that takes, it's unbelievable. Well, I've seen the video. It's like mesmerizing. How do they even begin to teach a robot something so complicated? So they use this really clever combination of, you know, human demonstration and AI learning. They basically show the robot how it's done, and then they use these things called diffusion methods to help the AI, like, anticipate the next move and refine its technique. So it's like if you were learning to play basketball, you'd watch someone take a shot, and then you'd practice, and eventually you'd get better over time. Exactly. It's learning and adapting, not just following pre-programmed movements. This is huge for robotics. Right. Ima imagine the possibilities. Oh, I know, right? Delicate surgeries, disaster relief, even helping us out with tricky tasks around the house. Mm -hmm. We're talking robots that can actually understand and interact with the world in a completely new way. Exactly. Okay. But AI isn't all robots and spaceships, right? Yeah. Let's talk about something closer to home, food. Because AI is also revolutionizing how we grow and manage our food supply. And this article about AI predicting corn yields really blew my mind. It's a perfect example of how AI can tackle real world problems, especially with climate change, making things so unpredictable for farmers. Right. Researchers are using these crazy high-tech tools, hyperspectral cameras, LIDAR, to analyze crops in ways we've never even dreamed of before. It's like giving farmers a superpower, letting them see things they couldn't before, catch problems early on, and make smarter decisions about how to manage their crops. You got it. And the coolest part is that by combining all this data with AI, they're developing models that can predict corn yields 
with incredible accuracy weeks, even months in advance. So we're talking about like knowing how much food you'll harvest before the season even starts. And it's not just corn either. Think about it, other crops, livestock, even entire ecosystems. The potential here is massive. It's almost like we're playing SimCity with our planet's food supply. In a way, yeah. With all this incredible potential, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room regulation. How do we make sure this tech is used for good? Absolutely. That's the crucial question, isn't it? It's easy to get caught up in the wow factor and forget about the ethical side of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like AI doesn't come with an instruction manual, right? Mm -hmm. How do you regulate something that's changing so fast? Mm -hmm. It's tough, right? Imagine trying to like nail a jelly to a wall. That's what regulating AI feels like. Uh -huh, yeah. Finding that sweet spot between encouraging innovation and like, you know, putting up sensible guardrails. It's a delicate dance. Totally. I mean, yeah. we don't want to stifle progress, but we also don't want to create some kind of AI monster. Right? right. And one of the biggest hurdles is that these systems, they can be like black boxes, even to the people who build them. It's not always obvious how they make decisions. So how do you regulate something when you don't even fully get how it works? Well, it takes a multifaceted approach. We need more transparency, clear ethical guidelines, and constant research into AI's impact on society. That makes sense. So are there any concrete examples of how governments are approaching this? Absolutely. We're seeing some interesting approaches. Some countries are going for sector-specific regulations, think guidelines for healthcare or finance. Others are taking a broader approach with national AI strategies. So everyone's trying to figure out their own path, huh? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. And it's not just governments, either industry leaders, researchers, even the public need to be part of this conversation. It's a team effort, for sure. But speaking of teams, what about the impact of AI on us? Could AI actually make humans smarter? Oh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's one we've been grappling with forever. Right. Like, are we talking robot overlords or like AI assistants that help us reach our full potential? I'm leaning towards the latter. Imagine AI helping us process information, spot patterns, even brainstorm creative solutions. It's like having a super powered sidekick for your brain. That sounds pretty awesome, actually. But doesn't it also make you wonder if we're offloading all the thinking to AI, will we like lose our edge, become too reliant on it. That's a valid concern. We need to be careful about finding that balance using AI to enhance our abilities, not replace them. Right. It's about keeping our own human spark alive. OK, so we've covered a lot from the line blowing tech to the big ethical questions. What's your take on the future of AI? Are we heading towards utopia or something a little more, well, Terminator-esque. Honestly, I think the future is what we make it. It's not pre-programmed, you know? We're at a crossroads with tons of paths ahead. So it's less about what AI can do and more about what we choose to do with it. Exactly. And that's why it's so important for everyone to be involved. This can't just be left to the tech giants or governments to decide. It's about making sure AI reflects our values, right? The kind of world we want to live in. 100%. We need to be intentional about this. The choices we make today they have huge consequences for the future. It's like we're holding the steering wheel, but we haven't quite figured out where we're going yet. Yeah, it's a bit of a wild ride, but that's part of what makes it so exciting, right? I mean, think of the possibilities, the discoveries. For sure. But with great power comes great responsibility, as they say. So what do we do? How do we make sure AI is a force for good? Well, we need to keep pushing the boundaries of research and we'll really dig into AI's potential and its limitations. And of course, we need those ethical guidelines and regulations we were talking about, a solid framework to guide us. Makes sense. But honestly, the most important thing is that we keep talking about it, having open and honest conversations about the kind of future we want to see. Absolutely. Because it's not just about the tech itself. It's about our values, our hopes for the future. It's about what kind of world we want to leave for our kids. Exactly. AI, it's a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. It all comes down to the choices we make. And those choices, we're making them right now. This isn't some far-off sci-fi scenario. It's happening as we speak. 
It is. The decisions we make today about AI, they'll echo through generations. No pressure, right? Now you're just stressing <laughs> me out. But seriously, it's a lot to consider. It is. But look, I'm optimistic. I think AI has the potential to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. Climate change, disease, poverty, you name it. It's about using this powerful tool to, like, lift humanity up, create a future that works for everyone. A hundred percent. That's a future worth fighting for. Couldn't agree more. Well, on that note, I want to thank you for joining us on this incredible deep dive into the world of AI. This has been mind-blowing. It's been a pleasure being here. And to everyone listening, we hope you've learned something new today. Maybe even come away with more questions than answers. Because that's what this is all about, right? Keep asking those questions, stay curious, and let's build the future of AI together. We'll see you next time for another deep dive into the topics shaping our world. Until then, stay curious. Circuit Breakers, we've taken quite the tour through AI land today. From game-winning algorithms to potential robo-docs, it's clear these silicon brains are making waves. But here's a thought that keeps me up at night. As AI gets smarter, where does that leave us humans in the workforce? Gwen and Charlie seem pretty optimistic about our AI-assisted future, but I can't help wondering if we're programming ourselves out of a job. Have any of you felt the AI breath on your neck at work? Maybe it's streamlining your tasks, or perhaps you're worried it might replace you altogether. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you embracing our new AI colleagues, or are you feeling like you're in a losing battle with the bots? Your experiences matter, and we want to hear them. And hey, if you enjoyed this journey into our AI-infused future, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us stay ahead of the algorithm overlords and keeps the human touch in your feed. This is Theodore, signing off and reminding you to stay curious about our AI-infused future. Who knows? Maybe next time, I'll be co-hosting with an AI. Now wouldn't that be something to ponder?